Okay, so this is the one Arjun told me to check out. Oh, but this one's cheaper. Oh, but this one's got better zoom. Uh, never mind, I'll just use Arjun's next time round. I'll decide later. Been there. Hi guys, I'm Shashank Villa, a naturalist, photojournalist and bird watcher and I'm here to help you out today in this mystifying world of bird watching binoculars. Look, if you've been into bird watching for a while, you've probably heard a few of these terms being tossed around eye relief, objective lens, all of these things. But honestly, I know if you're really starting out into bird watching, this can sound quite foreign and even quite intimidating to understand. But what I'm going to try and do here today is to actually help you make sense of those terms and based on that help you decide on what are the right binoculars that you should get depending on what stage you are of going into bird watching. So effectively today's video is going to be focused on you understanding these terms so that when you're going to be checking out these binoculars on any site or any shop uh, at the back of a box or maybe on a site like Amazon or Flipkart or Snapdeal, whichever, you can see these specifications and then realize that, hey, this seems to be the right binocular for me. And hey, if you like this video, find it useful, please do subscribe to our channel. I know everybody keeps asking for it, but there's a reason we do. We need your support to keep this content coming. So please do subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the content. And of course, you can always drop comments in the description below in case there are any queries and I'll try and answer those as soon as we are through with this. So let's get to it. So first, let's talk about that prominent number that is displayed or that prominent term that is displayed when you're actually looking at a binocular, maybe online or even at the back of a box. Uh, the numbers will be something like 8 into 40 or 10 into 50 or 12 into 55. Those numbers will be there. 8, 10, 12, perhaps even 16. Those are some of the numbers that you'll see as the first number. Now, that first number basically means the magnification or the zoom that your binocular basically gives you. So in very simple terms, what you probably are aware of when we talk about in cameras as well, 8x zoom or 10x zoom. So that effectively is your zoom. What your vision is, what your eyes can see, 8 times that, 10 times that, 12 times that, 16 times that. In a very, very simple way, that's what magnification is. The second term, yeah, if you recall those numbers, 8 into 40, 10 into 50, those sorts of numbers, the 40 and the 50, what does that mean? That is the size of the objective lens of the binoculars or the diameter of the objective lens. I know that sounds like again foreign language. What, is, what the hell is an objective lens? Very simply, it means how much light your binocular can gather, right? From the surrounding natural environment, how much light it can gather. So that determines on how clearly you can see an object. Better the light gathering capability, the clearer you will be able to see the object, all right? So let, that's the technicals out of the way. Now let's actually get into what it means for bird watching. Now when you're bird watching, it's a natural environment. You can't really control the light. Sometimes there's going to be light, sometimes there's going to be shadow, sometimes it's going to be dark, sometimes it's going to be bright. So what you have to remember in this case for these two specific numbers that we talked about, 8x, 10x, 12x, 16x, even 7x. What you will find in most cases for bird watching is that 8x or 10x is probably the best recommended range to go with for bird watching. The reason? Well, anything below 8 usually falls short of what you really need to to actually see the bird clearly, right? And above 10 basically means that the more the zoom there is, the shakier the image becomes. And hence, since the bird by itself moves so much, you do need a stable set up as well. That's why 8x or 10x is the recommended zoom range for bird watching. And as I said, the light situation is very unpredictable. So you need a certain amount of light gathering ability for your binoculars. Usually for binoculars which are in the 8x or the 10x range, the light gathering capability or the size of the objective lens ideally would be around 40 or 50. Yep, that's right, 40 or 50, it can be even 42 or 52, but roughly around that figure. Anything higher than 50 is usually difficult to get in that particular zoom range, and anything much smaller than 40 is likely to result in much less light being gathered, and hence you will not be able to see much detail of the bird clearly. One small addition, when we are comparing 8x or 10x, there might be a slight bit of a tip that I can give you. Usually, 8x will result in a wider field of view and don't worry we'll get to field of view later but basically it means you'll be able to see more of the scene and that's better for forest birding when there's a lot of trees and leaves and branches and you have to try and find the bird and 10x is usually better in more open areas maybe wetlands where you can actually see over a fairly clear area there's not many disruptions and you should be able to locate the bird clearly and maybe you just need to be a little bit closer 
rather than say with an 8x binocular so a 10x binocular will be more useful you'll recall we mentioned a term called field of view well to just go back to it basically what it means is how much of the scene you can see while looking through the binoculars now when i'm not using the binoculars i can see you know much wider i can see the entire room that i am in right now pretty much whatever is in front of me but whenever i'm actually using binoculars that field of view is going to shorten i'll only be able to see a zoomed in version so the field of view reduces and what's key to remember in this is that uh, with uh, the higher the zoom basically what it means is the the smaller or the narrower the field of view is going to be so keep that in mind as well however it is not the most important consideration that when you are looking for binoculars i would still advise that what you need to focus on is going to be the magnification and the size of the objective lens now another term that you will see mentioned is eye relief eye relief basically means the distance of the user's eye to the eyepiece basically from where you look through the binoculars now why this is important is specifically for people who use spectacles now if you're actually looking uh, at bird watching binoculars usually on average the eye relief range will be measured as 15 mm and that's pretty normal for most people to use that comfortably however with spectacles you're going to need larger eye relief or longer eye relief because there's going to be more distance between your eyes there's your spectacles and then the binocular hence you'll need an extended eye relief for the same because of that it's usually recommended that for people who are wearing spectacles it's advisable to get binoculars which have 16 mm or more as eye relief now another term that you'll usually see mentioned in some of these binoculars is also about coating what this basically means is that there is a special layer of coating that is applied in these binoculars so that you have high contrast images and you can actually see the true colors of the bird so this is also another important aspect to look at however uh this this particular facet or this particular feature of binoculars has actually steadily improved a lot over time and initially you used to have binoculars without coating or that would be semi coated or there would be just one layer of coating but most binoculars today will be multi coated to actually give you the best results but what you probably need to just look at is a a, a sign called fmc which means fully multi coated usually if you have that sign that's a good binocular to go with and now we are going to come to a feature which i believe is really really important when you actually select the right binocular for you now there are two designs that are actually available largely for binoculars in the market roof prisms and poro prisms now of course i could get into the technical history of what a roof prism means and what a poro prism means in technical terms but again i'm going to keep it very very simple for bird watching Poro prisms usually are a little more heavy, a little more heavy set. You'll see that you'll almost feel that they are more sturdy. Um, and this is the first binocular, first type of binocular that people usually go with. It's often the one which is recommended by a lot of people when they are starting bird watching. So that's a poro prism binocular. You'll see a lot of models that are used in the market. Perhaps one of the most prominently used one or the one of the most popular ones that you see is the Olympus 8 into 40 DPS one. So basically, you can actually check out that binocular. Um, it's a nice, sturdy binocular, and most important for poro prisms. they are cheaper than the other design that i will be talking about so it's a good bet in case you don't want to heavily invest into bird watching you need a particular type of binocular which is going to be flexible for for seeing various things uh for seeing monuments for seeing animals for seeing birds various things so it's a cheaper option to go with and a pretty sturdy option to also consider but if you are going to be interested in doing bird watching then i would strongly advise that you consider a type of design that is known as the roof prism now pretty much in most ways roof prism binoculars are a little bit superior to poro prism binoculars the reason is of course for, and i'll be quite frank here they are lighter they are more durable and they are they've got better optic quality or better image quality you'll be able to see on many occasions much more clearly through roof prism binoculars but that difference usually comes at a little bit of a cost and that's why roof prism binoculars tend to be a little more expensive than poro prism binoculars but the advantage for many of us is that of course that the technology again has advanced a lot and that's why the price gap between these two designs the poro prism and the roof prism has also come down quite a bit so that means usually to get now a roof prism the difference might be just a few thousand rupees for example uh, so that's something important to consider and perhaps another reason why you should really be considering if you are really interested in starting bird watching to consider a roof prism binocular 
there are other considerations to look at in your type of binocular that you want to check out also for example you would probably want to make sure that the binocular that you get for bird watching is hopefully fog proof uh, is hopefully water resistant or even waterproof usually some of these binoculars may have nitrogen filling inside them that usually helps with these features but that's another thing that you can look at when you are actually looking to get binoculars there will be a lot of other technical specifications that you will see. Uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is probably just put out an article below as well where I've talked about some of these features. You can even read up more online if you wish to about more of these technical specifications. But as long as you're keeping an eye on these specific features I've talked about, I don't really think that you'll be getting the wrong binocular for yourself. In that same article where I've actually listed all of these definitions and what they actually mean for bird watching, I've also mentioned a few binoculars that you can actually look at if you're starting bird watching so that will actually help you get an idea of what these specifications mean for these particular binoculars as well so maybe you can go ahead and do a little bit of research yourself comparing these binoculars with those features but you can be rest assured that the binoculars that are actually mentioned in that article for bird watching are all very popular binoculars that have been used for bird watching and really you won't go wrong with getting any of them of course, do check out some offers that you have on some of these sites like the ones I've mentioned are for Amazon. You can even check it on other sites and see where you get the best deal. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video useful and I hope it gives you a little bit of a better idea on how you can go about selecting a binocular for bird watching when you're here in India. Of course, if you do have any questions or queries, like I mentioned, please feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll try to answer them the best I can. And of course, as always, as I requested, if you do really find this video useful, please do subscribe to our channel. Take care, guys.